Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Evangelist Charles Kruger coming to you from the Loveville Prayer and Evangelism Center here in Clarksdorf. If you are in the area, come and join us. For those of you on the other side of the planet, bless you and thank you for joining. And today, the Lord has laid it on my heart to pray for favor on the work of our hands, favor in our business, favor in ministry, favor in your career, favor in whatsoever you put your hand to, even in your relationships. So, on the favor of God and the anointing of ease. And to explain it, uh, the Lord showed me a little thing that I'm going to draw today, but before then, we're going to give everybody a chance to join in. And so we're going to pray for businesses. We're going to pray for the work of your hands. We're going to pray for the abundance that the Lord promised us that has been procured for us by the blood of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. His blood is worth and His blood speaks for us. And we would be stupid to continue life and not take full advantage of everything that has been made available by such a heavy price. It's not just a fable. The Son of God, God the Son, gave His life so that we can have freedom, so that we can have peace and abundance, provisions from heaven, good health, divine health, no pain, no torment. This is what the Lord has made available for us and we're going to get into that. Amen. We will not be denied and we're not going to tolerate what Satan is trying to trick us out of our inheritance, our rightful inheritance by the blood of Jesus. We have an inheritance. We are co-heirs with Christ. We have a New Testament in the blood of Jesus and we can receive the promises that are yes and amen in, in Christ Jesus. The Lord's looking. All over the world, the Word of God says that the Lord is looking, His eyes are running throughout the world to see whose heart is set upon Him. And is there nobody that's crying, restore, restore. We're going to cry, restore and revive and renew and refresh and resurrect. We're going to pray for revival. We're going to pray for the blessing, the abundance, the capacity, prophetic discernment to be released to us so that we will know how to be a success how to make it in life, how to have an anointing to delegate. There's a special anointing to delegate. There's a special anointing to see how to delegate certain tasks and how to make things flow and how to connect the loose ends and how to get things together flowing in an anointing of ease in our lives. Amen. So bless you. Welcome and thank you for joining me today. Daniel is doing the, the broadcast and my dog Obi is... Fine. Obi is fine and he was not. I went to the vet this morning and they were going to clean his teeth and put him under anesthesia, but I just felt it wasn't the right thing. And the dog didn't look, and nobody felt it was good. So we've, we've opted for the natural products to clean his teeth. So we, we're trusting the Lord for clean teeth for Obi. So thank you for everybody that prayed anyway. And so, Father, we welcome you on this broadcast, and I ask you, Holy Spirit, that now you will cover every person and every profile and every comment with the precious blood of Jesus. Lord, protect us, and Lord, I thank you that your anointing will be upon me to minister your word and to pray effectively, Lord, with thanksgiving, Lord, to see things done, to get things done, to change things in the spirit realm, Lord, so that it will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I thank you, Lord, that you inspired to pray today in Jesus' mighty name, that as we pray for this very, very important thing, Lord, we need your favor, we need direction, we need strategies from heaven, we need the divine blueprints from heaven, we need your secrets revealed to us, given to us today, the spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that the eyes of our understanding might be enlightened, and we can know, Lord, that we receive the mind of Christ. We can know what is your intentions, what is your motives, what is your plans, what the Master is doing. Show us your secrets. Make the unknown known to us. Make the paths clear, Lord. Show us the way to go, Lord. Say to us, this is the way. Walk in it in Jesus' mighty name. Protect us, Lord, from failure. And Lord, raise us up. If we fall, if a righteous man falls, the Lord raises him up seven times. So a righteous man falls seven times, but the Lord raises him up all the time. So you cannot fail. You cannot quit. You cannot but make it in life. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So thank you, Holy Spirit. So I've got a little thing here. I hope you guys can see. This is what the Lord showed me. Alright. So this is your admin. 
administration, and that is the actual work. All right, and Shebro um, Gusakata, this is the vision. So, so these three things, there are three things that, that make up your ministry, that make up your soul spirit, body soul spirit. We can actually draw another one here and you can call it spirit. You can call that soul and you can call that body. We always thought that the spirit and the soul and the body was like this. That's not true. Your spirit has an effect, a direct effect on your body and your body has a direct effect on your spirit it doesn't go through the soul all the time and so this is a more accurate picture of spirit soul and body the spiritual side is your personal development that is where you practice the presence of the lord that's where you sow to the spirit that's where you mature as a child of the living god and that's where the holy spirit gives you vision the Holy Spirit gives you clear vision, prophetic discernment. The calling is there. The word of God of your life is there. The blessings are there. The provision is there. Now, your spirit and your soul communicates. There is a place, and this is the place, where your spirit and your soul connect. And this is the area that the scientists call it the subconscious, because they don't know what, what else to do it. What else to call it? Let's call it your subconscious. Well, there is a place where your spirit and your soul communicates with one another. If there was no communication between your spirit and your soul, you'd be dead. <laughs> or brain dead or whatever. If there's no spirit in your body, you're dead. So there's a place where your spirit and your body actually connects. There's a place where your soul and your body connects. And that that is where all three of them come together in agreement. That is who you are as a person. You are spirit, soul, and body. You're not one or the other. You are spirit. You are soul. You are body. All right, that's who you are. But all three in one. And so this place where all three of them connect, that's the place of agreement. That's the place of unity. So basically, somebody who's not born again, somebody who's not born again has very little agreement between spirit, soul, and body. But the more you edify yourself and sow to the spirit and practice the presence of the Lord, the more agreement there will come between your spirit, soul, and body. The, the word says, be ye holy, for I am holy. God says, be holy, for I am holy. Holy means one. Holy means pure. Holy means single. Pure. One. It means total agreement. No, no dive, no striving, no disagreement, no discord. Perfection as unity and unified. God is holy. He is one. The Lord our God is one. The Lord is three in one, but He is one. We're not serving three gods. We have one God. Amen. So spirit, soul, and body. Now the more you edify yourself, and let's say, for instance, you are born again. Your spirit man is the one that has been born again, washed in the blood of Jesus. Your soul is being saved. Your body is going to be saved. And what, what, what. The influence of the spirit over the soul must increase. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. This is your mind. This is the spirit of your mind. This is the word. The world calls it your subconscious. The Bible calls it the spirit of your mind. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. This is the place where your spirit has an influence on your mind, on your thoughts. The word says that we have received the mind of Christ. This is the mind of Christ here. Yeah. This is your fallen mind. This is fallen creation. This is where your emotions Get you in all kinds of trouble. This is, this is the realm of reasoning. Of the realm of the natural carnal mind. This has got to be drawn in under the influence of the spirit. Because if this carnal nature leads you, it can lead you astray. It can actually deceive you. And this is the place where Satan 
will tempt you and he, this is his playground. This is his arena. Do not fight him on this realm because he will use your emotions against you. He'll use your own weaknesses against you. He'll use you in that area and in that area. The pride of life, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh. That's those areas there. And this one. This is the pride of life. That's the lust of the flesh. This is the lust of the eye. Alright, so this, this is the battleground. This is the playground. This is the arena that Satan uses to influence or deceive your life or oppress you or lead you astray or bring you under bondage and captivity and all that kind of stuff. So what we want is we want the spirit man to lead and to influence and to communicate to our minds in a way that we can understand because we're walking around with revelation knowledge, the plans, the blueprints, the callings, the dreams, the destiny, the purpose of God is hidden inside your spirit. It is right there. Your spirit knows. Your spirit born again, human spirit that's born again. You're spiritually alive. You have been in light. The, the light of God is switched on in your spirit. There is the, the life of God that is inside of your spirit. And there is all the blueprints, all the strategies, all the wisdom, all the inventions and the innovation or whatever you want to call it. That is where the leading and the direction of the Spirit of God comes from. We want it to come in to a way that we can understand it and we can. We ask for the Spirit of wisdom and revelation so that the eyes of our understanding might be enlightened. This is the eyes of your understanding. This is a place where you understand and where you can actually apply what you have learned. Knowledge applied is wisdom. All right. Knowledge understood and then applied. That's wisdom. You don't, have, you don't just have knowledge. That doesn't help. Knowledge puffs up. Um, it, what does it help? You understand everything, but you don't do it. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Hearing means you understand. It's a revelation. What happens is you pray in the Spirit, you say to the Spirit, the Lord speaks to you and everybody is like, Whoa! What a beautiful message. I understand. And nobody does the word. And so be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. But you've got to hear before you do. You've got to understand. So the understanding must be enlightened. And then there must be a doing part. There must be a practical, practical part. There must be something that you do. It changes your life practically. Okay, so this is basically spirit, soul, and body. And we want the mind and the soul to come under the guidance and the influence and the direction and the leading of the spirit man. Because a born again spirit man, remember your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And he who is joined with the Lord is one spirit with him. You become one spirit with him when you join with the Lord. Amen. So it's basically the Holy Spirit and your spirit. You don't become the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit, you, the lines get blurred where you don't know where he stops and you begin or where you stop and he begins. It's like the unction of the Spirit of God. You, you in communion with him. He is in you and you are in him. And this is the realm of the Spirit. We want to draw the mind in there. We want to draw the soul in so that there can be more agreement between your soul and your spirit. Because a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. The spirit and the soul. The word divides, rightly divides, between the soul and the spirit. But a double-minded man, if, if your spirit and your soul is divided and you double, your spirit is fighting your soul. Your heart and your soul, your heart and your mind is fighting one another until there comes a time where you agree. And that agreeing, that unity, in your soul and your spirit. That agreeing is called faith. And that's where miracles come from. So what we need is we want agreement. We don't want to be double-minded. Let not that man think that he will receive anything from the Lord. Because a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. We need to have the one mind, the Christ mind. Spirit and soul must come together. This is the spirit of your mind. <clears throat> this is the Christ mind. And so... The more you edify yourself, the more you draw these two together and the more you start thinking like God and you start agreeing 
with what he said in his word. Because your mind wants to agree with the things it sees, it hears, it tastes, it touches, it, it experiences in this natural carnal world under the sun. Your mind is carnal. It's in the realm of reasoning and fallen intellect and this, this whole thing. And so, when these two come together, there's more agreement. So basically what you want to do is you want to get the spirit and the soul and the mind to come closer and closer together until you can only see one circle. Until there is total agreement and unity, holiness, one, not divided. A house divided falls. So we want to come into a, and be in, this is a way to explain it. To be a perfect man. Perfect man. So yeah. <laughs> so this, this is true for your spirit, soul and body. This is true. This is true for your spirit, soul and body. And this is also true for your business, for your ministry. And what happens is you come into a place, you come into a church. And the church, this is the actual work of evangelism. Let's say, for instance, this is evangelism. And this is the administration side of things. And this is the actual vision that the Lord is giving, the calling, the purpose, the destiny. It all happens in here. This is basically symbolic of the spirit realm. This is where you practice the presence of the Lord. And what we see in churches is that there are churches, ministries are predominantly focused on one or two of these predominantly. So there will always be these ministries that's more administrative and they got everything together. My goodness, they, they've, got they've got structure. They've got structure and they've got meetings, but there's no anointing. Or they've got all the structure, they've got everything in place and everything is correct, politically correct and, and human. And, and it's all about doing things right, but they're not winning souls. So there's no ministry happening and there's no anointing. And this is where most ministries find themselves today. Most ministries find themselves that all their books are in order and all they have, and they've got everything and this is the realm and this is very important. Don't get me wrong. Without this, then you get to other ministries. You get to ministries where they're just doing evangelism. And they're preaching and they're preaching and preaching and preaching. But there's no power because they've been lacking in the anointing. They haven't developed their personal relationship, their personal um, fellowship time and intimacy with the Lord. And so they lack and so they go out and they preach. But there's no power. The sick aren't healed. People aren't getting saved. It's like they're working their fingers to the bone and they're busy with all kinds of humanitarian things. But the anointing of the Spirit of God is missing and there's no, there's no unction, there's no passion, there's no conviction, there's no authority. There's nothing. It's empty. It's dead. It's a dead, lifeless shell. And they're working and they're working because they're working for God. But Jesus said, go away from me. I don't know you. Because, well, Lord, be in your name. We cast out devils and we did this in your name. And we fed them and we did this. And Jesus says, I don't know you. So you've got ministries that's focused predominantly on the working and the working and the working. But there's no vision because they may, may be neglecting the personal time, the practice of the presence of the Lord. The fellowship time, the worship time. Uh, and sitting around the Word of God, this is, this is where it happens. Revelation knowledge. This aspect is absolutely vital to any ministry. On the other hand, on the other, other hand, you get ministries that all practice the presence. And they're all about vision and they're all about worship and they're all about it. And there's anointing. But they don't go out to the world and they don't release the anointing. They don't minister to the sick. They don't pray for people. So they are still stuck in prayer. And how many ministries has I, have I seen in my life? We're not ready to go and evangelize our town. We're not ready. We're still praying. We're still waiting for the anointing. We're still waiting. And when God called me, 
He sent me just as I am and he threw me into the deep water and he said, go. And the moment, you know what? The moment I put my foot on the Jordan, the moment I put a demand on the anointing, I found that the anointing was there. The anointing is there. We have ministries that's got all this together. They've got the anointing. They've got the vision. They've got the mandate. They've got the calling of God. And they know how to do the work. But the admin is a mess. That's where we are at the moment. We are still. And this is why the Lord said to me, Pray, Charles. Pray for strategies. Pray for direction. For goals. For visions. For, for you know, blueprints from heaven. Get in line with what the Spirit of the Lord is wanting to do. So that these three things, these three aspects of your ministry can come together and the this is the actual ministry but many people many ministries actually focus just on the on these two but the admin is messed up many ministries have all the admin and they're doing a lot of work and they're going out and they're working but there's no power there's no anointing there's no presence there's no leading of the spirit because they're focusing on these two areas there's ministries probably that focus on this and they got all their administration is ready and it's right and they've got the meetings in order and they've got the power the unction and the anointing of the Holy Spirit but nobody's going out into their streets they're not winning the lost in their city they're not getting the sick healed they're not there's no effectiveness there's no demonstration of the power there's no work working out there must be work there must be Direction and vision and admin. And there must be anointing. This is actually anointing. You can call it anointing. Alright. This is your personal prayer life. This is your relationship with God. This is your love for the Father. The hunger and the thirsting after righteousness. This is the area where that is. Now it has to be led by the Spirit. Your admin has to be led by the Spirit. Your working has to be led by the Spirit. If you are lacking in the spiritual realm, then this is useless, pointless. This is your first step. And to get the working side, the evangelism, the ministering to the sick, the hospital ministry, the old age home ministry, the prison ministry, the outreach, the feeding the poor, the clothing the naked, and visiting, whatever. The, Everything has to flow and be under the guidance and the leading and the unction and the promptings of the spirit realm and the Holy Spirit that moves as this is the anointing, anointed for service. There's got to come an anointing on your admin. There's got to come an anointing on your work. But you cannot just sit with an anointing and not do any of this. You've got to put the hand to the plow. You've got to work. You've got to go out. And so we're praying today for the blessing of the Lord on our businesses, on our ministries, on our personal lives, the favor of the Lord, that there can come unity, that there can come agreement, that there can be more influence exerted from the Spirit, that the Spirit realm can take the lead, that the Spirit realm can, can lead and can influence the other factors in your life. All right. This is a simple way of just, probably there's more factors and things, but three is a good number. So basically this is true of a Christian business as well. This is your values. This is your client. This is the services and the value that you give your clients. It's not just about making money. It's about actually being and providing a service that is necessary that makes people's lives easier that makes people's lives better it's not to make a quick buck and have a quick quick um what do what do they call it vukervans what do they call that in english it's um get rich quick schemes that's not god it's not god god isn't into the get rich quick schemes when your values in your business is good and you've got good business business ethics and business code of conduct this has to influence your work so that your work will have an element of excellence upon it 
that you take pride in your work, that you do whatever you do as unto the Lord. It's not a curse anymore to work. It's not in the sweat of your brow where you earn and eat the bread of sorrows anymore. That curse of fallen creation is broken. You are a new man in Christ. That curse is not your portion if you are born again. Amen. And so this is also the admin and that's the planning and that's the business plans and these are the, the things, the charts and the timetables and the logbooks and the worksheets and the whatever else. And this is all those hours. We need more unity. There needs to come a place where these three elements meet. And the more unity and agreement there can be between the three elements of your business or your ministry or your personal life, the more agreement there is, the more holiness there is, the more oneness, the more faith there is. When you agree, we got to get our head and our heart to agree. Because your head wants to do one thing, your heart wants to do another thing. Your soul wants to do one thing, your spirit wants to do, no, but be renewed in the world. But in the spirit of the mind, by the washing of the water of the word. And the word of God brings direction and clarity and revelation. So that the understanding is enlightened. So that you can understand what is the purpose for your business. What's the purpose? What are you providing for people? It's just for money? Then you're going to fail. Your business will not last. It's not about money. It's about value. And the money will follow you. If you put value first, if you put the people first, if, the, if there's the love, if your motives are pure in your intentions and your intentions are pure, when, you are, when your heart is in it, when there's passion, when there's zeal, when there's commitment, when there's faithfulness, when you are taking ownership over the vision and the blueprints that God has given you, those plans, those things become alive and it draws money. That's the thing that God blesses. He wants to bless the quality. He wants, it's not just about quantity. Many people are working and it's all shallow and it's all superficial and, 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 and it's show and it's, and it's fool's gold. It's, 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 it's pretentious. It's hypocritical. It's all about the outward appearance of things. It's not about the actual people. It's not about the actual love for the people. And when we can get these and when we can work because we want to, because we are engaged in it, because we are all in, because we sold out, because we've put it all on the line and there's no other way and the bridges are burned and you're beyond the point of no return. There where you come into a place where you are taking ownership over it. That's where you will live. That's where the fire of God will rise up and you'll not quit. Even if it's tough, even if it's against all odds, even if you feel like quitting and everything's working against you, is a relentlessness pursuit, a relentless pursuit of the dream that God has given you and the vision because you are building on the foundation of a prophetic discernment and a prophetic revelation of your divine purpose and your divine destiny that God has put inside of you. You're pregnant with something that is divinely inspired, that wasn't a head thing, that wasn't just a lust thing, that wasn't a flesh thing, it wasn't a carnal thing. It was a calling from God to change the world and to actually have value and add value to the eternal purposes of God. Eternal value. That is the fire. That's where your passion, your calling roars like an all-consuming flame. And God help anybody that stands in your way. Any demon, any devil, not even the gates of hell will prevail against the church. We need these things to come in line. And we need favor. And this is what I'm going to pray about today. Amen. Glory. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, if we can have agreement today, Lord, that we need your favor. We need the Lord's inspiration. We need your touch. We need your mercy. We need it on our businesses. We need your favor. Lord, we need your hand upon us for good to bless us, Lord, and to open up doors which no man can shut, to open up the doors of Im impossible proportions, Lord. Lord, doors that no man can open except you, Lord. Lord, because with you nothing is impossible. And so we ask you, Father, for clarity, for prophetic discernment, for a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that the eyes of our understanding might be enlightened. I pray for your business. I pray for your career. I pray for your family, for your, fa for your wife, for your, for your husband. I pray for your marriage. I pray for your household. 
I pray that the Lord will bring these elements together. That it's not just about vision. And it's not just about work. And it's not just about being correct. And having everything in line and doing things. It's about getting these things together. So that there can be an element of creativity. So that there can be a spontaneity. That there will be excellence that you walk in it. And it's not about what you do. But it's about who you are. And that is the manifestation of the sons of God. Amen. So you receive that in the name of Jesus, Lord. And we thank you, Father, that today people's businesses are blessed. Lives are changed. You are the almighty God, Lord. And I ask you, Father, that now you will put your hand upon us and you will help us to delegate. You will help us, Lord, that as we have vision and we see clearly what work needs to be done and what administration things need to be in place to support all these things and to bind it up together and to tie up the loose ends so that there can be momentum in the spirit in our businesses, momentum in the work of our hands, momentum in our spirit, soul and body, in our personal lives, in our holiness, in our personal relationship with Jesus, our fellowship, our intimacy with you. Lord, we want to have momentum. Launch us. Lord, and this is what's coming. This is what's going to happen. And I thank you, Father, that it is done. Whatever it is, whatever your career is, whatever the Lord called you for, He's got some advice for you. We don't want to exclude Him. Amen. So, Lord, we're not excluding you. We ask you, Holy Spirit, because of this revelation and this word of wisdom, I ask you, Holy Spirit, that now you will confirm your word with signs, wonders, and miracles. Confirm it, Lord, and give vision and give blueprints and give direction and give purpose. Lord, give destiny. Show destiny. Show us clearly what next steps to take, Lord, and how to get to the dis destination, Lord. Show us your word is a light unto our path and it's a lamp unto our feet, Lord. Your word enlightens. Your word shows us clearly where we should go and what we should do. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you, Father, for your favor. I thank you for your blessing that things will work out. And when these things agree and there's no contending and there's no disagreement, discord, disunity, things start working out very smoothly. And things start working out for you. And it's like the favor of the Lord is on you and everything is where there's an anointing of ease. Things work, everything, the machine is well oiled and things run and there's momentum. And there's a spiritual momentum that is unstoppable. And these things work together. And I pray that those of you that God has called to be businessmen, to have different streams of income, businesswomen, that will, that will be a financial, financial dimension for the kingdom of God, a financier of the working of the kingdom of God. I pray that the Lord will give you clarity and these things will come together and you will know exactly where to be, when to be, where and who to talk to and who to phone and what to say and, and be at the right place at the right time. In Jesus' mighty name. I pray that the Lord will accelerate this and that the Lord will show you exactly what you need to put down on paper and what you need to keep in your heart and what, need, what you need to, to, to hide in the secret place of your heart so that, the, so that we will not squander what is holy and cast the pearls before the swine. And cast what is holy before the dogs. That we will know what is and have discernment between what to keep in our hearts and what to speak out. And what to write down and make plain. So that he that reads the vision may run that readeth it. We need to make this the work of the ministry and the admin and the anointing. It's got to come together. It's not just the one. It's not just the other. And every person in your organization has to understand these three principles. They've got to walk in it. They've got to develop themselves. They've got to, they've got to develop every area of this as pertaining to their spirit, soul, and body. When it comes into your organization, I'm talking about Christian businesses. When these people are working for you, your Christian business, they, they can't be messing around. They've got to look after their spirits. They've got to come under the unction of the Holy Spirit. They've got to renew their souls. Otherwise, you're going to have a bunch of people working for you that's not thinking like you. They can't see what you see. They can't go where you are going. It's impossible. You've got to have people that is in love with Jesus, people who knows this principle and this concept and understands that how they conduct themselves has got everything to do with where the ministry is going, where the business is going, whether or not it's going to be a success or not. Amen. So what? Praise Jesus. 
He's gonna, he's gonna get you there. You need people to understand this, and there must be communication. This is the areas of communication. If there's no communication, you can develop all of this. But if there's no common unity, if there's no communication, you're gonna sit with three businesses, three different things, and these things are not connected and they're not working together because there's no connection. And the one is dependent on the other. And they are all equally important at the end of the day. But this is your first step. The anointing, the, the, the vision, the values, the, the heart, the calling, the purpose, the prophetic destiny of what God has called you for your dream. That's step number one. Now the Lord help us to have the passion and the zeal and the fervency and the fortitude to get these things done and see it in solid reality, solidified in this realm, in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Thank you for joining today. The Lord is good. The Lord is faithful. Thank you, Father, for your anointing. I just want to anoint you guys. and Get your communion elements ready. We're going to have communion real quick. Thank you for joining. God bless you. Um, let's just put the banking details on you as well. Thank you, Jesus. Sebra bakote. Oh, bless you, Jesus. It's time. Did I, did I put it on now? Oh, yes, it's on. Okay, bless you. If you want to sow a seed, that the Lord is speaking to you about this, you want to sow a seed and point of contact for your faith. This is fruitful ground and sow it and activate this prophetic word of wisdom in your life, in your ministry, in your career, in Jesus' mighty name. And I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our personal Lord and Savior. I anoint you so the Lord will give you purpose, so the vision will be clearly understood, that there will come clarity in your life and you will have a communication anointing to communicate the vision to those that need to walk with you so that they know where you're going and why we're going and they get excited and they take ownership over it and they run and they go from their side they they they, they push forward amen you're not just pulling people and so father in the name of jesus we anoint lord in the name of jesus we anoint Every person watching right now, Lord, myself included and Daniel included, that's joining Love Born Father, so that, Lord, we will clearly know where we're going and what we're not wasting time, Lord. And it's not just money and it's not just fame and it's not just uh, all kinds of things, Lord, to feel good. No, there's purpose. There's purpose. And show us your purpose and show us, give us a clear understanding about what, what we're busy with in the kingdom of God. Because every one of us is a member in particular. And these people that's being called into business, you're going to be your own business owner and you're going to draw people in and, and you're going to employ people and you're going to help people. And you're going to build up people and you're going to provide opportunities for people. And that's what you're called to do, every one of you, if you're born again. Amen. So in Jesus' mighty name, Father, we receive that anointing and the favor of God in our business, in our ministries. And now, Lord, as we take the body, the blood of the Lord Jesus, we take communion, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your body and your blood that was broken for us and shed for us on the cross of Calvary. Lord, this is communion. You said, whenever we come together, do this in remembrance of me, proclaiming my death until I come. And this is common union, coming together as one in the body of Christ. And I pray that, Lord, you will bring unity and agreement in our spirit, soul, and body. And we'll not be double-minded. You will bring unity and agreement in our organizations between admin, work, and value, and the anointing in our ministries, the admin and the evangelism, and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Lord, that there will be unity, that it will function all led by the Spirit of God. In unity, no disagreement 
one vision, one purpose, united in a cause, the kingdom cause in Jesus' mighty name. As we partake, remember you are part of the body of Christ. You're not outcast, you're not forsaken, you're not lost, you are found in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood that was shed for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's receive it by faith. God's taking you to another level. Higher. Bless you and the Lord make this word bear fruit a hundredfold in your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Bless you. See you tonight.